Hello, fashionistas! Olga Lamaka here, and today I am in New York, standing just outside the museum at the Fashion Institute of Technology, which presents an amazing exhibition called Yves Saint Laurent plus Holston, Fashion in the 70s. The show celebrates these two great designers who define the sexy and glamorous fashions of the 70s. For the first time, Yves Saint Laurent and Roy Holston creations are collected together to compare and analyze how they dealt with similar themes and aesthetics during the height of their careers. It's impossible to think of 70s fashion without the glamorous work of Yves Saint Laurent and Roy Holston. This exhibition features an equal number of pieces by each designer, matching 80 ensembles and 20 accessories, arranged thematically across the exhibition. What is the connection between the two? It has to be their boundless talent and the time they lived in, the 70s. The decade of disco and glamour became defining for both of them. America's darling and Studio 54 regular, Roy Holston used to create outfits for Elizabeth Taylor, Bianca Jagger and Liza Minnelli. And it's hard to imagine that era without flowing elegant dresses by Holston. As for Yves Saint Laurent, the disco decade was all about feminine belly pop creations, the iconic looks influenced by men's wear and bright ethnic motifs. While today they consider diametrically opposed one another, this show gives us a rare chance to look back at the time when these two powerful and influential designers shared a common ground. Why did you decide to do a show on Yves Saint and Roy Holston? And why such an emphasis on the 70s? This exhibition actually was a little bit of an accident, a happy accident. We originally were thinking of doing an exhibition on Holston and maybe juxtaposing him with an artist like Andy Warhol because the museum at FIT has the largest holdings of Holston in the world, not only garments, but his entire archives, patterns, photography, and many other elements. But as we started to think about this, we realized that if we're going to talk about the height of Halston's career in the 1970s, the great person to juxtapose him with was Yves Saint Laurent. And it turns out the museum at FIT had incredible holdings of Saint Laurent's material as well. Some of the garments have a striking resemblance to one another. Do you think Yves Saint Laurent could have been influenced by Roy Holston or vice versa? The two men really didn't have a close or even a competitive relationship. And as you walk through the exhibition, it becomes very clear that they had very different ideals about how to make clothes. In a certain way, Yves Saint Laurent looks back to the tradition of French haute couture, and even his most diaphanous garments in this exhibition are actually uh, supported by a rigid understructure. They have little corsets in them, the way they built them at the House of Dior. Halston was very American in his approach. He believed in function and ease and the ability for the wearer to actually modify many of the garments the way she wanted. So they really looked at things differently. But Emma and I were surprised that, especially in the early part of the decade, they were creating many garments that had a very similar feel to them. Halter neck dresses, garments that echoed the 1930s, that art modern aesthetic. So what we theorize is that in the early part of the 70s, as they were looking for their individual voices as designers, becoming the distinct designers we know today, they must have had some overlap. So the experimentation and great change in the early 1970s, the social upheavals, probably did a lot to help them start to experiment with the same ideas. Both designers were so similar in their style at the beginning of the 70s. 
what happened by the end of decade and why did they take such a different path in their careers? I think with Halston, he was looking to the American lifestyle and the expansion of creating clothes for more people. He was doing more diffusion lines and looking to the average American. He was making uniforms for Braniff Airlines, he was making dresses for J.C. Penney, as well as custom-made clothing for his clients in his atelier. So his approach was very much one of connecting to the American woman, and that is very different in a way from how French women dress. Absolutely. Yves Saint Laurent was definitely looking to French culture and the trends of how French women were dressing. They were buying vintage clothing, and so he was really sort of drawing on these different inspirations and also on the tradition of French haute couture. And finally, what is your favorite piece in this exhibition? If I were to pick one garment, it's a red jersey caftan that was made for the American movie star Lauren Bacall. And I think for many reasons. One, it's easy and comfortable, but it's also graceful and elegant. And the fact that it is tied to such a great woman of style for me is very exciting. It's an Yves Saint Laurent marabou chubby style coat made out of marabou feathers. It's bright green. What's very interesting about this piece is Firstly, it very much resembles a lot of the things Hedy Slimant is putting down the runway at the moment for Saint Laurent. But also, it's from a really important collection in Yves Saint Laurent's career. In 1971, Yves Saint Laurent showed a collection based on fashions of the 1940s. This is a truly fascinating dual retrospective. Whether you're a die-hard fashionista or a history lover, you don't want to miss this exhibition. I hope you enjoyed taking this trip with me. See you next time.